Welcome to the five of us. We are five outspoken women with close to 150 years of experience as broadcast journalists. We left our jobs on the very same day and we are dedicated to helping women avoid the many pitfalls common to the workplace. We've heard from hundreds of people recounting tales of woe on the job, and we have done the research, we're putting it all in a book, and we are here to help. I'm Roma Tori, and along with Kristen Shaughnessy, Janine Ramirez, Vivian Lee, and Amanda Farinacci, we are the five of us. Hi, everyone. Question, what is the number one motivator for Americans in the workplace these days? And I will give you a hint. It's not money. It's not salary. And uh, here's another hint. Aretha Franklin. And how about <laughs> respect? <laughs> R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Respect is the number one motivator, according to uh, a survey that was conducted by a group called um, Argyle Ledger Confidence Report. And they found that the, the one most important aspect of, uh, of a workplace that retained employees is feeling that they're respected. And that is uh, that goes also along with uh, work-life balance in the workplace and health benefits. But money is not even close to that, which I, I, I found uh, pretty amazing. It does boggle my mind though, because time and time and time again, I hear that it's the opposite in many people's experiences at work, that they're disrespected and not respected. And it just amazes me because respect should be so easy and it's free. It doesn't cost anything, you know, a kind word, a gesture, uh, some appreciation for a job well done doesn't happen nearly enough. Um, and I also discovered that you know, positive feedback has an impact, has an effect on your brain. And the inverse of that is disrespect has an impact on, on your brain. There is sort of a physiological response that happens uh, within us when we're feeling disrespected. And Janine, I know you looked into that. There's a whole neuroscience surrounding um, respect and disrespect uh, um, uh, among uh, employees in the workplace, isn't there? Yeah, and it's just simple. I mean, if you have a respectful workplace, then you have a positive work culture. If you have a disrespectful workplace, it just leads to all this toxicity. It's really unnecessary. Um, you know, you have to accomplish goals together as a team, uh, you know, in any company. And regardless of your personal feelings, you may not like the way somebody acts um, or, you know, maybe something about their personality you may not like, but you could still treat this person with appreciation, with dignity. Um, you can have a positive attitude um, and you could lead with kindness. You could be kind to people. Like you said, that's free. It doesn't cost anything. And if people with big titles think that they're above these simple, simple you know, traits, uh, the ways to treat each other. They think if they have a big title, I could tell people what to do. I could tell them off. I could, you know, and it doesn't really work like that because when people feel disrespected, um, there is some kind of internal physical reaction. It's like an anger, right? Like how do you, it's a feeling. It's not really, it's not based in any kind of logical response. You feel disrespected and it's this feeling and it's not rational. It's like all of a sudden, it's like you feel threatened and then this information flows to your brain and then you get your hormones kick in and then your heart starts beating and your breathing rates start going fast and you you tense up you're ready to like punch somebody you feel your 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 fist clench um your teeth clench you know and no. this is a whole yeah. physical thing like you're ready to fight um yeah. <laughs> because your reaction is you want to fight back disrespect, right? Um, and to come down from that takes a long time, sometimes never. Sometimes if you feel disrespected, um, that feeling that you had at that moment, particularly in the workplace, stays with you for a really long time. Um, and so that just leads to a toxic environment, right? So if you have a respectful environment, you know, you can reduce stress among your, your, your employees, your workers, your coworkers. Um, you can increase productivity, productivity, um, collaboration, right? People want to work together, um, employee satisfaction. So there's a lot of ways and, and including like a fair work environment where you feel like you're being respected and you feel like you're being treated fairly. And that goes a long way when you want to retain workers and you want to feel good about going to work and you don't want to, you know, 
I mean, you really don't even want to wake up in the morning if you feel like you're going to a toxic workplace. So um, respect goes a long way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's conventional wisdom in all of this. And, you know, that that great quote from Maya Angelou that um, people won't remember what you said or what you did, but they will remember how you made them feel, right? Or they made you feel. So, um, yes, it and that lasts forever. And then there's, you know, that that other um, that other uh, expression, you can catch more flies with honey than vinegar. And it, it just seems like a no brainer. And yet a lot of people have no brains <laughs> when it comes to dealing with their um, their workforce, because, you know, I'll, I'll give you an example. In, in, in uh, my experience, I worked at a. Um, at a newsroom where we had a wonderful news director who used to, and this was the days before computers, um, and I was his secretary, and um, I, I, he would often uh, ask me to write, he would call them attaboy memos. And when he thought that somebody did a really nice job in the newsroom, regardless of what it was, you know, could have been a production assistant or, you know, anybody, he would have me write a memo that singled that person out and then I had to make copies and put it in everybody's mailbox. And I thought it was such a wonderful gesture, you know, um, and, and it, it was such positive feedback. So uh, when I went to another job, I made that suggestion of our boss. And I, I said, you know, when people do you know, good work, let them know it. And you know what the boss said to me? It's their job to do good work. It's when they don't good work is when they're going to hear from us. And it's like, whoa, really? You know, and then it was kind of downhill from there. So um, it just seems so unnecessary that 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 was the the tenor of um, of that management. But um, Kristen, we hear stories like that all the time. And um, we you know, we've heard the complaints time and time again. And it just seems to make no sense when it, it could be handled so much better and so much easier. Yeah, I think I mean, I think there's very simple things that you guys have talked about, too, but just Simply when you go in in the morning, say hello to your colleagues. And it doesn't matter if, you know, who it is, you just say hi, maybe learn something about them. Because I can't tell you how many times there was somebody on, you know, part of our technical crews, you know, throughout our TV career who would say, so-and-so doesn't even know my name. I get them on TV every day. Like, how does that happen? And it's, it's a disrespect and they feel it. And you want to be a team. So I think those are something, you know, that you can easily do. I think meetings should be kept short. You should be, you should recognize that your employees time is valuable. That They actually have to work that they can't just sit around while you're bullshitting around the table because you just have another meeting to go to. Um, there also, we had a, a female manager who there, there was a number of good workers who had recently left and she was bad mouthing them. Now these were people she had been friends with. And she was bad mouthing them to those who were left behind. And that A sends up a, you know, a smoke signal like that's what she's going to do to you, too. So just watch out. Mm -hmm. And it's just bad form. Right. You should not be doing that. These people were very hard workers and they really had made the newsroom buzz. And it was a, it was a big loss when they left. So those are just simple things to do. Um, there was an employee who was recently online complaining that they had put in for their vacation, had paid seven hundred dollars. They had told their employer I think in September of last year, the vacation is coming up in July, and they were recently told they could only take half their vacation. So, I mean, those are just simple things saying your time is not important to me. You need to be at work, and I don't care what you have going on in your personal life. And there was no real good reason. It wasn't like there was a big project that was due or, you know, something time sensitive. There was, it was just a power thing. Um, there was another uh, thing where people complain that the manager would not be able to do the job that they do. That's like a common complaint you'll see online. I think it's important that managers understand what they're asking their, the people they're managing to do. And I also think it's important that they, if somebody comes to them with a, with a problem, they try to come up with a solution instead of saying, oh, can't do it. I can't deal with that. You know, I, I don't have the bandwidth. I don't have the authority, whatever, and just kind of drop it and never deal with it. Those are just very simple things that really could make a workplace hum a little bit better. Yeah, Absolutely. Uh, on on the other side of all of that, uh, Amanda, there are very easy things that uh, employers or managers can do to to show their their staff that they're appreciated. And and I, all I can say is when you when you make somebody feel valued in a workplace, you get more productivity out of them. And exactly. and you know, I mean, that is the one thing that I think 
does retain a workforce is when they feel welcome and valued. And it doesn't take much. And yet, you know, they, they get the opposite treatment too many times. It's actually kind of appalling that you said, you know, that you had the manager who, who said, oh, it's the opposite. We only really need to let people know when they're doing uh, bad work because they should be doing good work all the time. Um, they get paid for. Yeah. 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 I, I, I think that mentality is pervasive, but um, I, I think that there's so much value in I, I can remember like emails still to this day that were sent to me from somebody who said you're doing a good job or that was that was amazing I, I probably still have them because they yeah. were so few and far between right like <laughs> yeah. nobody shares nice things or positive feedback they only tell you when you screwed something up right so what's been interesting for me in my current role is now I there are people that work underneath me and I'm not used to um, being responsible for like other people's whatever I don't, I'm responsible for. And so I, I make an effort, like every time somebody does something well to be like, thank you for doing that. That was amazing. Like without being, you know, blowing smoke up people's asses or whatever. But like, I think that, um, you know, thank, thankful for this podcast. I've learned so much about the way like work really works that it's almost insulting how simple it is to just be nice and sincere and smart and concerned and also get your shit done. I, I don't think these are like very difficult things. I think like somebody does something good or somebody has a good idea. We say, that's a good idea. Let's try it out. Or we try out a new idea and the idea doesn't work. We say, look, we tried. Thanks for the innovation. We're going to try something else and move on to the next. I think that it's probably just like a universal for, you know, how you treat people generally. Like people say, kindness matters. And these are the things, you know, how you treat people is what you give is what you get. Um, but there's so much truth in that because, um, I can just say from my own, like person, people like line up at my office and they like want to connect and, and have like conversations where like they ask questions and I ask quite like, that's the other part is like, it's so easy to just listen to someone. Like, what can I do to help make your job better? How can I help you do X, Y, Z thing? It's, um, I think that like you go to work it, it, for me, it always goes back to like that stupid pie chart of your life, right? Like it's like a hundred percent of your time, 80% of your work, your, your live days are like spent working. And are you happy? What makes you happy when you do you like your job, all the things we always talk about, but like literally how do you feel when you're dealing with the people you're dealing with every day? Do you feel like a piece of shit because somebody's saying nasty things or giving you dirty looks or talking behind your back that carries into your life. And that, there's no way that doesn't affect your life. So um, I'm not I'm not suggesting that, you know, because we I think we've all had managers who have spent a lot of time being really insincere and saying shit just to say it and, and you know, gaslighting. I, I I'm not a, a supporter of that, but I do think that sincerity goes a long way. And I do think that being that way also makes it easier to reprimand and to correct when something goes wrong, because because now you're connected. Right. Like now you've you've established that you have a nice working relationship and that you're literally trying to just improve and, and do better and, and make things good. Um, I think that it's just for, it's like almost stupid how easy it is to just be nice to people without yeah. like making it a big deal. And it also helps to gain trust because once there's trust, you, as you said, um, people will understand that when they tell you did a good job, they know you mean it. And when the job was um, subpar, um, they'll want to improve, you know, just because they, they know what your standards are. But what happens, Vivian, when uh, there is disrespect in the, in the workplace? I mean, how is that supposed to be handled? Because, uh, you know, I, I've seen it so many times when one person acts out and, and does something that, you know, pisses someone off. And then they're they're um, corrected or th they're reprimanded in an equally disrespectful way, and then it it just escalates and it gets it can get ugly. Well, I think um, you know, listening to everybody's points and and pointers and advice here, it just brings to mind how we're all just a bag of emotions, right? Yeah, we're just like really every day struggling with how we manage that, you know, how do we manage that in groups of people and in the group of people that we spend a lot of time with, i.e. in the workplace. So 
I think the experts have said that one of the worst things you can do is to respond to disrespect with more disrespect. Mm. So try not to do that. And I remember clearly one time uh, somebody didn't like what I had said um, to somebody else. And they came out in front of a large group of it was like um, an open working space and screamed at me uh, uh the criticism like you you do you you shouldn't have said that and i was so taken aback i just like looked around noticed that everybody's watching i went straight over to this person i said can we go into this room next door and we had it out and we made up and we became really good friends and i think this person didn't understand at the time that their emotions had gotten out of control and that that was not the way to handle it and it also reminds me of another moment when I was under pressure working with the team out in the field uh, on a story, uh, one hour to deadline, and I had to jump in front of the camera. And there was new technology to deal with. And everybody was stressed out because we were the guinea pigs who were being test driven with this with this technology. And I remember something that I said or how I said it. Often it's how you say something and not what you say. How I said it set off the technician somebody who was 30 years older than me, who I loved working with, and he lost his cookies, like just lost his shit on me to the point where I was like stunned. Like I was scared and stunned, but I also knew him well enough to know he is reacting to this new situation and the pressure. Long story short, I, I just totally like flubbed the live hit and was so tearful and upset by it. I was in my 20s. That, you know, I'm packing up my stuff to leave at the end of the shift. I, you know, quickly say goodbye. He couldn't even look at me. He came after me the next day and he said, one, I should have known better. Two, mea culpa. Three, the way you handled it, I I could just tell it came out in your life hit. You did a shitty job. You hated that fact. You probably blamed me, but you didn't take it out on me. And there was somebody else in the truck. There was a, there was a third coworker. So I remember he said, thank you. Thank you for like just showing me that I still could do better and that I should have known better. And that stuck with me. I remember thinking, I remember one instantly forgiving him because he had shown me respect in a way that acknowledged what I went through and also acknowledged what he went through. And he didn't try to say, but you, but you did this, but you did that. And that's, and he didn't try to excuse his behavior. He just simply let that apology land. Mm -hmm. And that to me was, truly respectful and uh, was very instructive. So I think long story short, if you think about how you would like bad scenarios that have happened to have worked out better, like how would you have said that if you were given the second chance or how would you have liked that other person to have handled it better? Then you can kind of take that and apply it to situations and just be really mindful of the fact that you're fight, flight, or freeze mode that Janine was talking about is like activated and you are at risk of doing something or saying something that's going to make it so much worse. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, one very important point to be made when there is disrespect in the workplace to handle it um, privately, to do one-on-one and not to open it up in the middle of you know, uh, uh, and to make a scene because that doesn't help anybody. And then um, you're going to be embarrassed. They're going to be embarrassed. And and there's going to be a lot more to apologize for later, uh, later on. And, and also you guys pointed this out, listen to each other. If something seems um, to be disturbing or frustrating at work, um, then talk it out but do it one-on-one. You know, there, there was something else I wanted to point out too, that there is, there's sort of, there's a good way and a not so good way to um, to recognize good work. And the not so good way to me has always been when you get those um, group emails where everybody's thrown in and it's just like, did I get everybody's name right? You know, and then you, you don't feel like you were singled out for, you know, any special acknowledgement. And so I, I think it's, it's really important to, to do a one-on-one, um, uh, you know, uh, honor or, or, or cheer, you know, and just say somebody really did a nice job. Um, I just want to email. Somebody's always overlooked too. Yeah. So that's right. And that's the thing. And and it's always the one, respected, right? Right. It's always yeah. the one who's overlooked that, 
it, that feels the most about it, right? Everybody else is like, oh, ho-hum. <laughs> so. Roma, on that note too, I think, I mean, you guys touched on this, but I, I think the sincerity part of it is so important because, yeah. you know, we've all worked with people who are fake nice and they're nice because they need something right. and people serve a purpose for them, but they don't really give a shit about that person. Right. Eventually, people figure those people out, right? Yeah. You can only be fake nice for so long before everybody reads reads the real person that you are. So that only, you know, that might last a year or two, but people are going to figure it out. Yeah, and in a workplace, everybody knows each other so well, they can read, you know, mm-hmm. they, they, they can read who's being honest and, and sincere and who is, you know, not genuine. So yeah, it that stuff just comes right through. Um, I just want to go around and ask each of you um, if you can recall like one example in which you really felt special uh, because you were singled out for some, you know, some good work. Is there, um, I'll, I'll start with mine. When I was at um, CBS and I worked my way up from secretary to writer to producer, and I finally, um, I finally got uh, a job on air at News 12 Long Island. And so I was going to leave. And my boss wrote this most beautiful um email well it wasn't an email back then it was a it was a memo and it was just this you know lovely thing saying how you know valued i was as an employee and that i was gonna have a great future and all that and then everybody in the newsroom signed it the the memo Mm -hmm. and i have it to this day you know i framed it so um you know that that sat really well with me and it and it kind of launched me into my you know new career path so that that made a big difference for me and and anybody else I got um I uh was an intern and uh it was a one week internship um and I remember one of the newsroom anchors came up to me and said you you know what would really be amazing because we haven't had an intern do this in a long time is if you got on air like you got on air during this internship with a story that you found oh wow and I did and I remember he came up to me afterwards and he was like, good job. And and I remember thinking like, was like, why would he, why would he instill that, that kind of inspiration? Why would he egg me to do that? And we ended up working together on the weekend. And he said to me, I, I saw it in you. You were so hungry, but you were so scared and nobody was taking you on. Like they gave you like the usual phone numbers to call and check up on updates. And they were making you do, you know, the, the thankless work. You, you, you weren't being recognized for what you could do, but you were also not being given any guidance. And so I remember feeling really, um, really pumped by that. Yeah. And that's sort of in the realm of mentorship, right? That, you Mm -hmm. know, that's a whole other story, but, and, and that as well as it happens too rarely, you know, that, that you get mentored and then somebody recognizes your, your gifts or your talent. Anybody else have a moment where you really felt valued? It's always telling like when, you know, when management would say like, Oh, this is an opportunity for Janine, or this is Simon has Janine's name written all over it. Like then you were just like, you know what, this came up, I stood out for whatever reason that this was a good fit for me. And so they recognized my value and what I brought to the table. And that was always like a compliment and made me feel respected and valued. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Because that, that was something that there was ownership in that, 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 that whatever it was that belonged to you and you staked your, your ground on that particular uh, assignment. That, that was really nice. Anybody else? No. I remember, I mean, we all get those notes that you you remember too. I have a funny story. I can even mention his name. It was Phil O'Brien. He was one of our first news directors, but I was, we, it was at a time in the nineties when we shot our own stuff. Right. Like, and I had just gotten there. He didn't know if I could shoot. So it was like the New York flower show. Right. <laughs> and he's like, and I hear him talking to the desk. He didn't know I was there. And he was like, I don't know if she can fucking shoot, but we'll figure it out. And I'm like, oh no, <laughs> now there's pressure. So I went and I like did rack focus and I like did all this different stuff with my shooting. And then he came over and he was like, you can't fucking shoot. He's like, good <laughs> friend. And I felt like, okay, now I'm here. I proved myself and, you know, I'll continue to try to prove myself. But it was, it was a nice introduction. You're on your way. And it, and it yeah. was a really nice first impression too, you know. And, and it was so Phil, wasn't it? 
Yeah, that is, <laughs> yeah, right. Short <laughs> and to the point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. How about you, Amanda? Um, yeah, I have a couple. I used to be happy when, um, when Peter told me he was excited that I was coming to, to his desk because he wanted to know what I had going on because he thought I was like interesting. I thought that was like such a compliment that he was like, thought I was interesting, right? Like that what I was bringing was interesting. Um, and I've had, I guess like later on in my career, I had other times that um, people shouted me out and um, it's just really gratifying, right? Like it's just because you know, you're like working your ass off all the time or whatever. And so it's just nice when somebody takes like a minute to say, Somebody called me a jack of all trades once and I was like, oh, okay. Like that's, <laughs> that's a nice, um, yeah. that's a nice compliment. I think it, that's it but, to be yeah. singled out, right. As opposed to, you know, those group things where it, it doesn't really matter. And, and, yeah. you know, there's an obligation there. It's not really sincere. So, yeah. All right, guys. Well, uh, that was a lively conversation. Um, we're going to end with a quote and this one comes from uh, George Bernard Shaw that uh, wonderful writer, um, and it goes like this. There is no accomplishment so easy to acquire as politeness and none more profitable. And so I will leave you all with that word, uh, words of, those words of wisdom. Thanks for joining us, everybody, and we'll, uh, we'll be with you next time. Thanks for tuning in to The Five of Us. We want to hear from you with any questions, ideas, or suggestions for future discussions. Just write to us at the email you see here, and we will be eager to help. Talk to you next time.